Why do we need Houdini in Unreal Engine? Unreal Engine can create high quality cinematic shots at low high budgets. Why do we need Houdini? Houdini can create impressive simulations, create large worlds, and create tons of assets with variations using its procedural workflow. This means we can create one asset and spawn a million different variations of that asset. Creation without limiting possibilities. But wait, Unreal Engine has a nanite system that supports an almost infinite polygon count and Unreal has a huge library of high quality assets ready made at our fingertips. So why is Houdini important again? We don't always find that perfect asset within Unreal's marketplace library and it has to fit our storyline and theme of our scene. We can't just stick any asset we find on the marketplace into our scene just because it's available. We might need our asset to be a particular size, particular shape, and more important, it needs to give out that right feeling that will resonate with our audience. If you start to compromise your topic just to forcefully use a free epic game asset, that may start to hurt your project. With Houdini, we can create a perfectly fitting asset that goes with our storyline and theme, something unique that fits perfectly with our scene. I'm not telling you to recreate every single 3D model in your scene because that's not necessary. You'll have a star or a main character in your scene that deserves all the attention. And this is where you cannot compromise and where you should put all your time and effort into. UE can quickly get you background assets set up along with your environment. But for the main event, I think it's better that you put more love into it and make it unique and have it custom made just for the star of the show. This uniqueness adds to your project and brings about a new feeling that no one else has, rather than using one of the assets from the marketplace that everyone else is using. Houdini Custom HDAs versus Unreal Engine's Assets I'm going to use this spooky house asset that I made in Houdini and I brought it over into UE as an example to explore different design design decisions in Houdini that I made to create this digital asset. The parameters created in Houdini are exposed in UE to help us make art directed decisions in Unreal Engine. Houdini can create digital assets like generators exposing different parameters that affect the model and these parameters can be made available for tweaking in UE. Being able to change these parameter values in Unreal Engine will help us focus more on the artistic side and the story. All the technical details are then hidden underneath Houdini when we create the digital asset. Setting up a themed background. The scene you see here was created by loading one of the example environment sets from Epic Games Marketplace, and that got me a usable background environment right out of the box. After exploring around the scene, I picked an angle I liked and created a camera. I found a Sky plugin also available in Epic Games Marketplace for free, and I used the Sky plugin to add to the atmosphere of my scene. Next, I could start playing around with the lighting to get the feel I wanted. This was the perfect start for my project. With very little effort, I was able to kickstart the atmosphere of my scene. I then used Houdini and started creating my creepy house asset that will be placed, that I plan to be placed in the middle of the camera shot. The main idea I wanted you to realize out of all this is that we're able to establish an environment and play around with the lights to help sell the story, which is important in any cinematic project. But what is more important is that we were able to get to this point very quickly. How are you using the HD in Unreal? This is my haunted house HDA created in Houdini and ported it over into Unreal Engine. This asset is rather complex and isn't the most ideal to be used for demonstrating the concepts of exposing parameters from Houdini into Unreal Engine, prioritizing artistic decisions. You don't want to overexpose every single parameter available just because you can. That doesn't maximize the flexibility. And in fact, if there's too many parameters, it will really cramp your creativity. There's just too many choices. In Houdini, we try to hide as much of the technical details to free up your mindset in Unreal Engine when you make those artistic decisions. I'm going to use my haunted house here, but we'll mainly focus on the first layer of this asset. You can probably tell that the haunted house has a lot of repetitive geometry, like the roof, and this is actually a nested HDA embedded inside this larger haunted house asset. For some of you that have been watching my channel for some time, you know that I really like modularity. You can see here that we have one, two, three, four, all the way to six rooftops. There's actually one hiding behind the back. Each roof 
is a HD generator in itself. The one on the top is a little different. This has that little curve. So you can see it curved over here. Anyways, the point is that this haunted house is a little complex just because of the multiple layers that I've stacked on top of it. So we're going to focus on one layer, which is the first layer. And I'm going to show you what parameters I've exposed and why I chose these parameters to expose. So first of all, let's load this into Unreal Engine. This is how I started off with one layer and then stacked multiple times. At the beginning, when I did, uh, when I was working on this, I was planning to make one asset like this, sort of copy and paste it and then, okay, just give it a second. It needs to think. Here, let me just move it up actually. So there's two of them. So I was planning to manually stack it in UE, but that didn't really work out as the way I, as I planned. So I was planning to use the HDA like this, which actually took a lot more time than I initially thought. And it didn't really satisfy what I wanted to do. Oh, let me turn this around. You need to be aware of is that if you make a change in the HDA, you have to update it three times now, just because I've copied the eight Houdini HDA three times. One, two, and three. So there's three of them. And then you have to manually rebuild each one every single time you make change in Houdini. So if I go over here and unlock this, otherwise we can't edit anything in this HDA. If I double click this, everything's grayed out. Let's go back up, unlock this. Let's go back in. So I have this roof generator. So I do have HDAs nested inside the larger HDA. The first issue is that we don't have a parameter to change the size of this in Unreal Engine. I can change it like by scaling it like this, but really it's just stretching it. Let's isolate this. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go visibility and show only selected. Now that disables all the lights as well. So luckily I put all the lights in a folder over here. So I can just enable the lights here, enable the sky and fog, everything here. So this sky and fog that has all the lights in here. So now we see this, we're going to focus on this one, the first layer of the, of the asset. This is actually just stretching it. So if we stretch it too far, you can see that the tiles don't look great. Like the tiling of the roof, the shingles aren't really bad. But if I go to Houdini, exposing parameters in the HDA. And I take this box and I'm going to add a transform in here. Okay, let me put the grid back in. I'm going to stretch it on both sides of the X axes. Okay, let's stretch this. Okay, it does take a while because it has to calculate. I'm going to be stretching this on the X axis. So let's, let's, pump it up a bit, um, five to some extreme. Now it still looks fine here in our HDA. And we're not literally stretching the tiles. We're telling the HDA, I want the roof to be this long and the HDA is smart enough to, to calculate how many tiling I want on the roof. That's because now let me come down here to to this parameter over here, the roof uh, rows and columns I have. So I have a nice little Houdini expression here that is calculating how many tiling to be made on the roof. Now, this is just a simple calculation of saying B box Z size, which is the width. I'm saying the total width and I'm saying divided by 2.7. And that's the ideal width size of each tile that I want single tile size. And then by dividing by that, I will get how many tiles. Same thing with the column. This box size tells this HDA how large the initial dimensions of the roof. And this is not very useful in this HDA right here, just because I can't change it in Unreal Engine. I have to come back to Houdini to change this, which is not ideal. So the first thing we want to do is expose this as a parameter to Unreal Engine and be able to adjust the size of this box that we're feeding into this roof, um, this part. We're going to basically replacing all these nodes, exposing the width and depth. So let's take all this, move aside. Ignore it. Let's get a grid. Okay, this grid, I don't need all these columns. So I'm gonna put two by two. And another thing is that I want the grid to start off in a nice, I want the initial values, the default values of this asset to look nice. You, you want someone to drop something into Unreal Engine and it wa it, you want it to have a nice first impression. So what I'm gonna do is come over here, put this back in, make it active. Uh, I'm gonna take out the stretching though, cause we don't need that. We don't need this one. I'm gonna 
template this, or I'm gonna template this guy, come back to my grid, and I wanna make it this, the default size to be almost that size. And it doesn't have to be exact, because I just want a nice default value, a nice first impression. Okay, that's close enough. It's not exact, you, so you can see it's not exact, that's okay. So let's put a transform node down here, because that's how we're gonna stretch it in Houdini, not in Unreal Engine. Resize, let's go into the first, Okay, let's grab a float, grab over here. I'm gonna name this parameter. And I'm gonna call this, now the reason why the label is gonna be just width, cause I'm gonna put a title here for this panel. So we have a nice little title and the title will be roof, roof tiling. And we wanna set a default value for the, the default value will be one. Why? We, because the original parameter value of that we're gonna link it to starts at one. This is one, it's this number. I'm gonna click and drag this over here. Okay, put your cursor into this little text box here, press Alt E, and Notepad will pop up. We actually don't need all this. We only want the SX, the X of this, and then Control S to save, or just like File, Save. And as you can see here, SX is here. Apply, so these two are linked. If I change this parameter, it'll change this one too. Now let's add another one. This with Copy, Control C, Control V, and it Paces it here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna call it roof. And I need a default value, one, that's fine. Put your cursor over here and Alt E. And this is SX, but we actually want this one, SZ. So we can actually manually change it. We know it's just Z. You can click and drag it over, but you know what? I'm just gonna do it this way. File, save, close this, and SZ is in there. and click apply and you this is now green take this and just ignore it because we're not using that now let's go back up let's go here let's test this and i'm gonna stretch it okay i'm gonna enter a number in okay there it goes so this still looks great or it looks decent let's go back into unreal engine and test this out okay so we're back in unreal engine now let's click our asset and rebuild to get all the changes that we made and you'll see a bunch of tool tips uh, pop up here and it's computing, it's calculating. Okay, now let me get rid of all these highlights. Okay, one thing we should see is our new uh, exposed parameters. So there is a double, ex uh, so two of them are being exposed. Let me see what is going on. Okay, I just realized I, I made a mistake. Over here, I have another rows and columns. So I had created that, but I forgot to get rid of it in during my practice recording. So let's come over here and let's remove these guys because we don't need them. In we, we need the tiling gap. Let it think. Let's go back to Unreal Engine. Click this and rebuild again. So this is what happens when you're practicing the recording again and again and again you get messed up pretty easily now we're finally in a good position hopefully okay here we are so we have this tiling root depth and width oh now i messed up the labeling okay let me go back now we actually have controls to control the size of this asset so we should not need to stretch it like this this is not necessary because this is physically stretching it out of its designed size so control z to undo now i'm gonna the width i'm gonna say five give it a time it, it needs time to think because it has to recompute everything so this is not stretching it you can see that there's nice tiling I mean, the gap is a little large, but we can fix that because we have exposed uh, this tiling gap. So we can actually fix that. Uh, 0 0.1, let's put that. I think you need to be like super, super small, like 0 0.01 or something. Let's fix the depth as well. So let's go 5 for the depth. Nice. So this looks a lot nicer than it was before. And this is huge. This could be like a hut or something. Like a vacational hut. All right, so this is a very simple demonstration on how how you choose the parameters to expose. Automating versus control. Now there's another thing I wanted to mention is that you may not want to automate how many tiles, you might want full control. So that's more of a design decision. And the reason why I say that is, let me go in, I actually secretly 
hiding another version of the roof shingle generator so i'm gonna put this one aside uh ignore it and i'm gonna come over here and i'm gonna connect this one and this one gives us full control you can see here it's asking how many rows and how many columns so you can actually control that if um i wanted i don't know if i deliberately wanted a cramped tiling or or, or very sparse tiling put five and it goes like this and columns i want a very sparse so it looks like this. There's a lot of holes. But hey, that's that's what I want. That was a d artistic decision. So if you wanted to expose these and be able to control exactly how many rows and how many columns of tiling you ha want on the roof, like this is the, a decision that you as a developer have to make. What is the main point of your project? If you're working in a studio and you're, you're a TD, you're like a technical designer and you're the one who is creating these assets, but you're not going to you might not be the one using it. It's probably going to be handed off to a uh, 3D artist and they're going to make these artistic decisions. So it depends on what they prefer or what you intended this asset to be used for. The focus may not be on the roof or number of tiles. The focus may be somewhere else. So that's, it. there is no wrong answer. Whatever you choose, whatever parameters you choose to expose, that's your call. So that's something to keep in mind. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.